Hello! This video tutorial gives a brief overview of the current state of force feedback in video games, as well as information about how Wise Motion can help you easily build and integrate motion feedback into your game. Game developers are always looking for ways to further immerse gamers into their game world. In real life, the brain is used to receive multiple stimuli at the same time for the same event. For example, hitting a ball with a bat will produce a sound and a vibration on top of the obvious visual cues. Reproducing this association between multiple types of senses is important for better immersion. If the game player does not feel the same things as in real life, he may notice that something is missing and the overall experience may feel artificial. Of course, gamers are used to the missing details, but adding tactile sensations to the existing audio and video cues will improve the overall gaming experience. In video games, several different types of devices support a type of force feedback, including game pads, joysticks, steering wheels and pedals. Most common type of feedback in video games is the rumble in the various versions of the game pads or controllers. The basic mechanism used in controllers is a simple electric motor rotating a misaligned mass. Some game controllers like the ones used by the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 have two motors, usually with different masses and rotating speeds, to provide a wider range of sensations. Traditionally, the process of adding rumble support to a game involved a lot of trial and error. This meant that a programmer and a designer would sit together and change bits of code, recompile, and then try the result in-game. Although this process was effective, it was slow, labor-intensive, and each iteration required the help of a programmer, making it difficult to fine-tune and tweak the force feedback in-game. With the advent of Wise Motion, the creation of force feedback has been streamlined. Designers can create, experiment, and simulate a variety of different scenarios within the authoring application and in-game without requiring the help of a programmer. At the core of Wise Motion technology is the ability to transform audio signals into motion signals. Since audio and feedback are generally associated in the real world, it made perfect sense to fully integrate Wise Motion into Wise so that we could leverage many of the existing audio functionalities. By implementing a comprehensive pipeline solution for motion, similar to the one that exists for building audio, Wise Motion allows you to Create sophisticated and realistic motion effects with a very short learning curve. Integrate motion easily into a game without significantly affecting the performance of the game or sound engine. Use the same features as audio to build and integrate motion. Create motion effects for the same type of device on various platforms without additional work. Before working with Wise Motion, there are a few things you need to do. First off, you need to install the proper drivers and connect a controller, such as the Xbox 360 controller, to your computer. After this is done, you can open or create a new WISE project using WISE 2008.2 or later. WISE Motion is not available in previous versions. Once in the project, you need to enable the motion devices that you plan to support in your game. To do so, open the Project Settings dialog box, switch to the Motion tab, and then select the devices that you want to generate motion for. Now that the devices are enabled, let's look at how you can create motion in WISE. There are actually two different methods for creating motion. The first method extracts the audio signal from an existing sound and transforms it into a motion signal. The second method uses a signal generator to generate the motion feedback. In the WISE project, Let's use a gun reload sound as an example for generating motion from an existing audio source. By default, this sound only generates audio. If we play it back, we only hear the sound, no motion is felt in the controller. To generate motion from this sound, you simply need to route it to a motion bus. Motion buses, like audio buses, are created in the master mixer hierarchy. They have the same functionalities as audio buses, except that they only control motion signals in the voice pipeline. To route the gun reload sound to a motion bus, simply select the Browse button in the Motion Output Bus group box and select the motion bus you want the sound to be assigned to. If we play back the sound again, we will hear the audio and the controller will rumble as well. 
Because this method uses the audio pipeline to generate rumble for the controller, modifying properties such as volume or pitch will automatically affect how much the controller rumbles. You can also fine-tune the rumble intensity without affecting your mix by using the motion volume offset. In our example, if we boost the motion volume offset, the amount of motion in the controller will intensify. The sound's positioning setting can also affect the motion signal. If, for example, the sound you're extracting motion from is set to 3D positioning with distance attenuation, the intensity of the controller's rumble will be modified over distance. This additional control is possible because the listeners in your game capture not only audio, but also motion. With this in mind, imagine a first-person perspective game where the listener is located on the camera. In a case like this, a blast from an explosion can easily drive the intensity of the rumble based on the proximity of the explosion to the main character. This can be accomplished in WISE by simply using 3D attenuation for the explosion sound. The second method differs from the first method in that motion effects are created from scratch using signal generators instead of being generated from an existing audio source. These signal generators are added to special objects called motion effects objects via source plugins. Although the first method is quick and easy, and great for prototyping, using motion effects objects has certain advantages over the automatic extraction method. First, by using motion effects, you have more control and flexibility over the final product and are more likely to get the results you are looking for. Second, the motion effects voices use far fewer samples in the range of 375 as opposed to 48,000 for motion generation from audio sources. This can be a great savings in terms of memory and CPU usage. To demonstrate this second method, we will create a rumble effect for this door opening sound. The first thing we need to do is create the motion effects object. To do so, simply right click on an actor mixer hierarchy object, select new child, and then motion effects. When you load a motion effects object into the property and contents editors, notice how the contents editor is divided into two sections, one for D-Box and one for controller. This allows you to create separate motion effects for the different motion devices. For this example, we will only create a rumble for the game controllers. Click on the Add Source button for the controller to create a motion generator source. Now, double-click the source to load it into the property editor. The motion generator source can be seen as a rumble synthesizer, where the rumble effect is created by defining the speed of the motion device motors over a specific time period. Since each platform's motion controller is slightly different, WISE allows you to define each of them separately. Let's start by defining the motion curve for the default small motor. Simply select it from the list and start adding points along the curve until it blends well with your associated sound. You might also need to change the time period so that it matches the length of your sound. You may have noticed that both the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 controllers have two rotating motors, one small and one large. These two motors can be fine-tuned independently to create more subtle effects. To define a custom curve for the large motor on the Xbox 360, select this motor from the list. Select the Custom option from the Usage list, and then add points along the curve until you get the results you want. Now, both motors have their own curves, and can be fine-tuned independently. It's time to see how well the audio and motion work together. Since we want the audio and motion sources to play simultaneously, we will create an event that contains both the sound and motion effects objects. To do so, select both objects in the Project Explorer. Right-click and select New Event, Single Event for All Objects, Play option. Now, both objects are in the same event. Let's play back the event to see how well the audio and motion match. Seems pretty good. But if the two don't match, you can go back and edit the motion curves until they are just right. That's it! You now know how to create and edit motion in WISE. For further information about force feedback and WISE motion, we encourage you to read the white paper Force Feedback in Video Games, which is available on our website, as well as the Managing Motion section 